Ah, uh, yes. Just as I calculated. Ah, uh, good. Good. I just need a little more power. Okay, it is time. Three, two, one. It's moving. It's alive. It's alive. Behold, the colossal robotic hand. It's not exactly how the Colossal Robotic Can was created, but the real story is even cooler. Welcome back to the Explorer Zone, everyone. This week, we'll see how one of the science mill's biggest attractions was built. And we'll explore biomedical engineering, a STEM field that combines biology, medicine, and engineering. That's what sparked the idea for the Colossal Hand. Let's take a closer look. The Colossal Robotic Hand stands over 30 feet tall and features a controller that allows guests to move it into different positions. Just by looking at it, you might assume it runs on a complicated coding system, but you can actually buy the brains of this exhibit for under $20. It's run by a few Arduino microcontrollers, which receive input information and translate it into an output, like motion. Creating this exhibit started with a question. What if we could build a giant hand? That led to more questions. Could we make it move? Could we show how it moves? Could guests make it move? Inspired by those questions, we started to imagine different solutions. For example, what if people could use levers and pulleys to move the fingers? That idea sounded really cool, but then we realized how much stress it would put on the fingers. They'd be really heavy, and we didn't want to risk breaking them. So we kept brainstorming. Eventually, we landed on robotics. We started to imagine how people could control the robotics and came up with a joystick that mimicked the bones of a human hand. We had an idea. Now it was time for some serious planning and a whole lot of geometry. So we chose stainless steel for the hand because it can hold up in a lot of different types of weather. To build our sculpture from sheets of steel, we needed to break down the 3D shape of the hand into a net of polygons flat 2D shapes with straight sides. But what shape to use? Rectangles can end up looking like a stick drawing, but to capture the hand's curves, we decided triangles would work really well. We wanted to build the final sculpture from as few triangles as possible without losing too much detail. A 3D printer allowed us to test out different models and really helped us visualize the final product. In the end, a scaled down hand made up of 500 triangles looked best. 500 triangles is still a lot, however, and we had to put them all together like a puzzle. There was no time for guessing where a piece fit. To keep everything organized, we gave each piece of our model its own number. We turned the model into a full-scale digital pattern and programmed a CNC plasma laser machine to cut each piece from stainless steel. We were finally ready to put it all together. We used welding guns and torches to fuse each piece to the next. It started with a finger, and slowly grew to a palm. The massive wrist and arm pieces were last. It took over 1,000 feet of welds to assemble everything. Imagine welding from an end zone to an end zone of a football field three times. A foundation for the hand was dug in the Science Mills Park reaching eight feet into the ground. During installation, each section of the hand was lifted by crane and carefully stacked. It was nerve wracking to watch, but by the end of the day, everything was in place and looked great. Inside, the hand is controlled by an Arduino Mega microcontroller. Another Arduino is inside the joystick. When you move the joystick's fingers, 
A potentiometer sensor sends data to the Arduino about their position. The Arduino in the joystick then syncs up with the Arduino in the hand and shares the position data. The hand's Arduino tells the linear actuators up top that control the fingers how to move. One of the hardest parts about designing the hand was making sure the fingers don't bump into each other. When you make a fist, all your fingers are touching. But we didn't want steel to hit steel. So to solve the problem, we had to program the fingers to move in a certain sequence. Each finger, except the thumb, has two actuators on it. So they can bend in two different spots. The Arduino inside the hand not only knows where to move the fingers, but also keeps track of where the finger's current position is to avoid collision. We also programmed the hand to, you know, be polite. It can't make any rude gestures. Colossal Robotic Hand blends biology and engineering. So does the field of biomedical engineering. This is a field that focuses on creating technologies that help people when they're sick or when they're hurt. Bioengineers use math and science skills to develop tools such as artificial limbs, dentures, blood testing machines, physical therapy equipment, x-rays, and more. Let's head over to Wendy in the Learning Lab for a bioengineering challenge. activity is all about being creative and using the engineering design process. This is more of a project-based design activity that can be made more advanced by adding in some fun tech components with coding and programming. Our challenge for you this week is to use recyclables and craft materials to design an arm, hand, or foot, ankle prosthetic prototype. Remember that a prototype is just your preliminary model. It is not going to look or function exactly like your final product would. A couple of questions to help guide you are, what would you want to study or look at to learn how the body parts move? How will you make it move and control the movements? Will it move at all? What do you want the prosthetic to do? What is its basic function? Are there extra special functions that you want it to have? Once you've done some research and have thought about your end design, it's time to get to work. The engineering design process has five steps. First is ask a question. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Next is imagine, brainstorm, list all of your ideas and choose what you think is the best solution to the problem. The third step is to plan. Draw out your chosen design, draw your ideas in detail, labeling all of the parts, and list what materials you want to use to build your design. This step is followed by create. Here is where you get to build your design and test it out. And the last step is improve. Now you get to make your product better. Fix anything that doesn't look right or doesn't work exactly the way you want it to. Engineers work together through the engineering design process. It is a cycle that not only helps scientists create a solution to a problem, but helps them work through testing their product and making improvements as necessary. It sometimes takes hundreds of redos or making improvements and retesting before a prototype turns into a final product that's ready for the public. Rarely do professional scientists get it exactly right on the very first try, so don't give up. Here are some suggestions for your materials. Cardboard, fuzzy sticks, felt, foam, craft sticks, string, rubber bands, straws, Velcro, bandaging rolls, scissors, tape, markers. This is not an all-inclusive list by any means. We want you to be creative and use miscellaneous items that you have around your home. What you want the structure and function of your prosthetic to be will help guide you to the materials that you want to use for your unique prototype. We want to show you some examples of how you might make a movable joint like a wrist or ankle in your prosthetic. This is just a basic joint using one piece of cardboard. It's just folded where the joint should be. You could also connect two pieces of cardboard, um, separate pieces, 
joining them with bendy straws that can hold the foot in different positions to make a joint, or connect two pieces of cardboard with rubber bands. This will give it a little bit more stretch and movement, especially laterally for your joint. This straw hand is an example of how to use straws and string together for movement. If you have bendy straws, the bend of the straw can be placed where the joint of the movement would occur, or you can cut the straw into small individual sections and the space between them will create more joints and more movement. The template for this robotic straw hand activity can be downloaded from the Explorer Zone. Some extension ideas for our viewers that know how to code or want to learn some programming skills would be to incorporate technology pieces that can be coded for special functions for your prosthetic. You can code a micro bit. This can be used as a built-in compass or a temperature sensor. A circuit playground express can be programmed to read your heart rate or you can code an Arduino that would use micro servers to move parts of your prototype. Check out these photos of what some of our STEM summer campers created for their prosthetic prototypes. And don't forget to share all of your prosthetic creations with us at programs at sciencemill.org or tag the Science Mill when you post your designs on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Visit our website to find more DIY activities as well as a career connections guide for this episode. Careers in the biomedical field often combine multiple disciplines. Professionals who work in robotics have to know not only how to effectively design the pieces of a robot, but also how the coding and programming will interact with the components. For example, the Da Vinci surgical robot is a tool used to complete complex surgeries using only a tiny incision. The robotics behind this tool need to be extremely exact and precise. Another career related to biomedical engineering is welding, which is a process of combining components through heat or pressure. Welding is required in everything from robotics to manufacturing. To become a welder, there are trade schools that will teach you the basics and help locate apprenticeships where you can learn on the job. There are also college degrees that specialize in welding engineering. A biomedical engineer's goal is to solve problems. One challenge being explored in biomedical engineering is the 3D printing of organs. While prototypes of 3D printed teeth, bones, and ears have been engineered recently, bioengineers are still working on creating more complex 3D printed organs, like the heart. This would allow hospitals to create transplants that are custom made for each patient and decrease the need for organ donations. Biomedical engineering can have huge impacts no matter how large or small the innovation. Thanks for tuning in this week. As always, you can find more information and activities on the Explorer Zone tab of our website, and you can catch us live right here on Facebook every Tuesday. Tune in next week where we'll be talking with Dr. Nels Eldy, a scientist who works with viruses and how our body deals with them. What do you wonder about the coronavirus? Email us your questions at programs at sciencemill.org. We'll see you next time.